my name is Valeria. I work in, uh, in the European Commission uh, in DG Clima, in the unit that deals with uh, uh, the land use, land use change and forest rail UCF regulation. But now we also, uh, our unit was also involved uh, uh, last year in the publication of the communication on uh, sustainable carbon cycles. So now I'm going to make a very short presentation about it because I know what matters is uh, your discussion. So I want to be short, assuming that you may be familiar with the topic as you are the experts, as it was said. So um, the, the context is that uh, uh, the European Commission has a goal to become, uh, the European Union has a goal to become a climate neutral by 2050 and to achieve negative emissions after 2050. And for this, uh, the first uh, uh, thing to do is to stop uh, producing uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And that is the focus of all our climate policies from uh, the ETS, the For Sharing Regulation, WCF, and many others. But, th but then we also need uh, carbon removals because uh, to become uh, to balance the residual emissions and to become net negative, we also need to increase uh, carbon removals. And uh, so that's uh, another important uh, aspect. And uh, since we will always need the carbon for some um, chemical processes and materials, instead of using fossil, fuel, fossil uh, carbon, we must uh, shift to either recycled carbon or carbon from uh, biomass, bio-based carbon. Uh, and so to cover these uh, aspects, uh, we need a, 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 a solid policy framework. And uh, we started this work with this communication uh, that was published in December and which has uh, two, um, and the title is Sustainable Carbon cycle, Cycles. And uh, it has two annexes, one uh, uh, focusing on the role of carbon removals uh, for 2050 and another one focused on carbon farming, which you may be interested in. Uh, the definition of uh, carbon farming that we provide uh, in this uh, document uh, is uh, um, a business model that rewards land managers for carbon sequestration or for reducing the release of carbon to the atmosphere. So the scope is really CO2 um, and uh, examples of practices that are relevant are from uh, catch crops to agroforestry to better forest management, afforestation, peatland restoration. Uh, and we also included in the scope um, blue carbon. So carbon uh, in uh, coastal areas um, and in aquaculture, uh, um, but that is uh, an area where we still need a lot of research, uh, but uh, we need to start uh, also working on that. Uh, carbon farming has not only benefits for climate, uh, um, but also can be a, 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 a new source of income for land managers. And in many cases, uh, uh, it provides win-win solutions also for biodiversity and climate adaptation. So in, a, in, our, uh, in the communication, we propose uh, some goals, uh, we call them challenges, and a, an action plan for carbon farming. The goals we have is that by 2028, so roughly by the beginning of the next CAP, farmers should really uh, be able to measure their climate performance so that uh, really we can have a, the, an XCAP which is uh, result based. And uh, with, we see a lot of uh, a lot of developments. There are many tools are emerging, uh, but um, uh, we still need to work with advisory services and uh, awareness uh, for uh, uh, for farmers to to use these tools. And um, and then we also have a, a legislative target of uh, achieving 310 million tons of carbon removals in the LULUCF sector in 2030. And now we are at around 260 million tons of removals. So we have a gap of around 50 million tons. And uh, our goal is that uh, carbon farming contributes to fill this gap. Um, and then the action plan. Um, we There are ways already today to support carbon farming through the CAP and uh, um, research, so Horizon Europe uh, and LIFE projects. So we will continue to do that. Uh, in particular, under the Horizon, under Horizon Europe, there is um, a mission, the soil mission, where there is a, a, lot, of, a lot of money for uh, improving soil health. And um, we are making sure that uh, uh, projects are um, targeted at carbon farming approaches. Um, then uh, very soon, uh, we will launch a study on applying the polluter pace principle to agricultural emissions, uh, following a recommendation from the European Court of Auditors. And uh, also, uh, probably in the next couple of months, we will launch a call for an expert group um, that will help us uh, uh, will help us implement 
all our carbon farming policies, but also in, more broadly, all, all our carbon removal policy. In particular, uh, uh, we need advice from this expert group uh, on how to set up a certification mechanism uh, for carbon removals, which is what I will talk about in the next slide. Next slide. Thanks. So currently, um, uh, after publishing this communication, we immediately started working uh, on uh, uh, our next step, which is uh, to adopt a legislative proposal for a framework to certify carbon removals. Um, there was a big conference about it uh, end of January. Uh, in, in my last slide, of, uh, you, if you receive it, you have uh, the link to see the recording if you couldn't uh, make it. And uh, uh, we have... Um, uh, we have already published an inception impact assessment and a questionnaire, a uh, public consultation, uh, which will be open until the 2nd of May. Um, so I, I invite you to have a look and uh, if you want to provide us feedback. And in the last quarter, we should uh, adopt the legislative proposal. What do we mean by a regulatory framework? So we need, mm, we, we see there are a lot of certification mechanisms for carbon removals and there are a lot of type, a lot of ways to provide carbon removals, but these are very diverse. And so we need some, so it's, it is difficult to assess their quality. So we need some uh, quality, some robust quality standards uh, and some requirements and uh, some transparency so that uh, it's easier, um, so that we can ensure that uh, uh, carbon carb removal certificates are, uh, are reliable, uh, the MRV is good, uh, they are verified, they ensure environmental integrity, so we want to maximize uh, co-benefits for um, other environmental objectives. And hopefully having this kind of certification framework will uh, enhance the uptake of a uh, removal solution and um, give um, and um, enhance also investment in, this, uh, in these activities. Um, so yeah, the point is to have a, a good uh, EU oversight, a good EU governance for, uh, uh, for uh, these uh, certification mechanisms. But the details of this are still very much open. We are uh, discussing about it uh, and we are uh, looking forward also for uh, feedback from stakeholders. As I said, the call for evidence is um, open and uh, this expert group I mentioned before uh, will, uh, will be our uh, main uh, uh, forum to discuss uh, the details of these rules. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Yeah, here you have uh, some links. Uh, including to the recording of the conference and some studies.